Welcome back folks, we're doing another Android Studio test and we're comparing the MacBook Air M1 with 16 gigabytes of RAM versus the Dell XPS 13, the Core i7 processor, Intel's new 11th generation marketed as Evo. I don't know what that means, but supposedly it's good. And from my initial test, it has been doing pretty well, especially in JavaScript contexts. And today we're doing Android Studio as per popular request on this channel, but I do have a word of warning here. Android Studio is not yet optimized for the M1 chip. And the emulator that I have on there is actually just a preview. So if you missed that video, go check it out. I do both the Android Studio video here, the installation and initial run compared to my MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i9 and uh, the installation of the Android emulator on the M1. So this is just a preview. It's not a full Android emulator yet. We're gonna use it today. We're gonna see which one of these is gonna be faster. So here we are. I have version 4.1.1 of Android Studio on both of these machines installed. And I'm gonna start up the Android emulator ahead of time because on the M1, Android Studio doesn't yet automatically start up the preview version of the emulator and its own emulator is not working, is not compatible with the ARM architecture. I know, right? There, Android is ARM and it needs to be emulated under Intel running on the ARM architecture. It's confusing. Until they get it straightened out, this is what we're working with. So let's create a brand new project. I'm gonna go over here on the MacBook Air. I'm gonna click on create new project and I'm gonna just create a simple basic activity project here. Let's call it my Proj one I know, creative, right? Let's finish that. I know that Android Studio likes to do a few things. <laughs> while it's preparing things for me, that takes some time. I don't know what it's doing, but it's doing a few things. Gradle build apparently. Not my favorite tool to use, but whatever. We have some necessities to use it, right? On the Dell, I'm gonna create a new project. Same thing, basic activity. Let's click next. I'm gonna call this one My Proj one Just as creative a name. Let's click finish and same thing here. It's gonna be doing a little bit of a Gradle build to get up to speed. Okay, and when it's done with that, I'm gonna kick things off on the emulator. Let me just bring the emulator into visible position here on both machines. And they both seem to be done and ready. All I have to do is just now hit that play button. Now there is a shortcut and I would prefer using that, but I don't have four hands. Let's see if I can reach it. Shift F10, that's gonna be really awkward. I'm just gonna press the play button at the same time with the mouse or the trackpad in this case. And let's go. All right, both of them are building. I don't see any sign that they're starting up yet on the emulator. Let me bring up the emulator a little bit closer so we can see it. I do hear the noise on the Dell now. Yeah, the noise is there. It's getting warm and we have a winner. Interesting, the, uh, the MacBook M1 actually started first before the Dell. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes these things happen. It's in preview mode. It's running under Intel emulation, yet still it beat out the native one that's running on an Intel chip. Now this could be just a fluke and I don't recommend you just go run out and buy a new M1 processor Mac because there's still a lot of work to do to get Android Studio up and running on an ARM processor natively, as well as that emulator. It's got a bit of work to go, but this is actually really good news for the future of where this technology is headed, I think, in my opinion. So later this year, when everything is fully supported, hopefully on the new Mac processors, on the Apple Silicon is what it's called, and there's gonna be a new generation of Apple Silicons coming out, hopefully with the new MacBook Pros and desktop machines. What are they gonna call it? M1X, M2, I don't know, but this looks very promising, especially for the price point. So this Dell 13, XPS 13 costs about $1,700 and the MacBook Air M1 is just $1,200. So yeah, the MacBook, in my opinion, is a more capable machine and that's why I personally use a MacBook. I'm not trying to sell you on a MacBook. I'm just letting you know what the facts are here. Now I have a feeling this particular build was a little bit of a fluke. So I'm gonna run it again just to make sure um, what happens the second time around after initial successful build. Because typically what you do in development is you stop it, you run it, you stop it, you run it. It's not just a one-time run. So we'll see what that iteration looks like. But just to show you on the M1 what's happening behind the scenes, 
machines, Android Studio is still running under Intel architecture. So being translated by Rosetta and same thing with that emulator right there. All right, now I'm gonna background this app on both of these machines. I'm gonna stop the process and I'm gonna hit play one more time just to see how quickly a subsequent run will be on both of these machines. So I'm gonna hit play on both of these and I did see that behind Android Studio, the Dell emulator, the app came up much faster. Let me give a little bit more space so we can see here. And what I'm gonna do is actually delete this application. I'm gonna uninstall it from the emulator and same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna stop the process in Android Studio on both machines. And let's do this one more time. This time the application needs to be reinstalled. Even though it's already pre-built, it still needs to be installed on the emulator and run. Kind of a more realistic workflow because that's what we as developers sometimes do for troubleshooting steps. Ready? One, two, three, and go. And the clear winner here is the Dell XPS 13 with the i7 chip. Not by much though, not by much. Considering everything that's involved here, the fact that Android Studio is running under Intel emulation, the fact that the Android emulator on the M1 is just in preview, not too bad, not too bad. Oh, and since I've got you here, there's uh, one more thing I wanna show you, and that's the battery, folks. So this Dell has actually been on for the same amount of time that the MacBook Air has been on today, which is about an hour. I've been doing different tests for about an hour now, and here is the battery level on the Dell. We're at 69% remaining, and the Dell is calculating that there's about two hours and 21 minutes left. I believe it. Given the performance that we've seen from Intel-based computers, and this has been the story, unfortunately, and it is actually consistent with my MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i9. It lasts for about two hours on a battery and even less if I'm doing some really intense virtual machine stuff. Let's take a look at the M1, shall we? All right, so the M1, you can see that the battery is unhindered. If we look at the energy tab on activity monitor, remaining charge is 98%, time remaining 20 hours. Even after all my testing, not having this thing plugged in, Android Studio, emulator, and a bunch of other things I was doing before this, pretty crazy, right? One more thing I wanna show you, and it's this temperature test. So this is not the most scientific thing. I bought this little uh, infrared thermometer. Let's take a look at the temperature. On the M1, it's 26 degrees. And on the Dell, it was up to 47 degrees. Now it's down to 38 degrees. Still, you can see a considerable difference between them. This thing is really warm to the touch. It was hot, now it's just warm. And this thing is cool. Well. It's a little warm, but you saw the temperature difference. So there you go. Just another additional thing to let you know when you're considering whether you want to buy one of these Dells or one of these new M1s. There's benefits to each one and there's also cons to each one. I'll let you make that decision. And now let's do a test of a more realistic scenario, which is this application that one of you suggested in the comments. It's the architecture samples repository found on GitHub under the Android account. Example of how to set up your own applications. This is it right here. And this is the one I already downloaded and I'm going to run this right now on both the Mac M1 and the Dell. Now I don't know if it's actually going to run on the M1. We'll take a look right now. So I've already opened the project up. I switched to the correct branch according to the instructions. And now all that's left to do is just press the play button. All right, so I've got my emulator here and set up, ready to go. There's no more build processes happening, so we are ready. I'm gonna go over here to the play button and hit these at the same time to run the application. And hopefully it'll run on both machines. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the emulators up to the front and we'll also watch the Android Studio in the background while it's doing the Gradle build and trying to run the app. Let's see how long this takes. The progress bar is unfortunately not a very useful one. It doesn't tell you that it's a percentage complete. It just tells you that it's doing something. So we don't know when it's gonna finish or how long it's actually going to take. All I'm gonna to have to go on is the visual representation of which one of these is gonna come up first. I don't even have a timing service that's gonna time the build. 
but what I'm trying to see is how close are we really on the M1 to the Intel? Is it gonna be really close? Is it gonna be worth it for the amount of money you're gonna spend on buying this machine? And is it gonna give us hope for the future of the ARM processor? All right, so I do hear the Dell now. It just started working again with the fan. Of course, the MacBook Air does not have a fan, so there's no sound. All right, so as you can see, the Dell is done and it deployed and started the app on the emulator and it's working. We've got a sample to-do application. I can add to-dos, test, test, and there we go. And now the M1 finished as well. So not too far behind, but it's running, which is a good sign. So everything seems to be working. It's just a little bit slower and that's because of that Intel emulation and also probably because it's in preview. So there you go, folks. If you like this kind of video, let me know what else you wanna see down in the comments below, and I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It's gonna be helpful for other folks to find this video as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.